DaVinci Resolve 18 has some pretty wild new effects. We've already talked about the object mask new in the color page and the automatic depth mask is, is mind blowing. But today I wanna to show you what I personally feel like is the closest thing to magic I have seen in DaVinci Resolve. It blew my mind when I first found it. Let me show it to you. Now last year I was working for a company called Pipeline. They're in the streaming education space and they run this podcast called Becoming a Streamer. And because of some complications with the platform they were using to record this podcast, they ended up with a video that was eight frames a second. By the way, this was a really good episode of the podcast uh, with Gold Glove, Goldie. Great perspective, being on YouTube for a long time. I recommend it, link will be in the description. But I had this problematic footage and I had to figure out what to do with it. We had enough there where it didn't feel good to scrap it. Also, like he went through the hassle of recording the video. So I started hunting around. And that is when I found these options down in the inspector, retime process and motion estimation. And because of the tools here, I was able to take a video from this. I self-motivated really well to do it. Like I wanted to make better videos because I enjoyed watching them. To this. I self-motivated really well to do it. Like I wanted to make better videos because I enjoyed watching them. I have a separate version of the clip here and all I had to do was set this retime process to optical flow and the motion estimation to speed warp. Now the specific method I am showing off is limited to the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. There are some options available for the free version. You can change this, I believe, to a frame blend and the motion estimation to some of these other options. It can get you a bit of the way there, but best results will come from optical flow and speed warp. They will also take the most time. So you get what you pay for in, in, in time invested at least. And this clip is close to a worst case scenario as possible. There just isn't much sort of like temporal data. We're dealing with eight frames a second. So even though while the general motion smooths out a whole lot, you don't have a lot of that quick motion, especially in the lips, because those are just moving too fast for what we have here. But overall, this footage is now watchable and there are just like occasionally a few inches, maybe when there's fast motion or he's talking really fast, where it looks a, a little off, but you have to be watching uh, fairly closely to spot that. I was super happy this process worked, especially um, I feel like this is a pretty unique scenario, sort of, you know, salvaging footage when there isn't much of that, like, you know, temporal resolution. But for some other examples, um, I have two stock footage clips I brought in here. And in a probably more common scenario, I have this clip of this guy running. And this is a 30 frames per second timeline, but this clip was recorded in 25 frames per second. So if I arrow through this video, you see that first frame is copied, and then it plays, 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 plays copies. Plays, 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 copies, plays, plays, plays. So what is that? Like one out of every five frames is repeated to stretch those 25 frames out uh, for 30 frames per second. So while that plays back and it doesn't like look awful, it would have that occasional uh, jitter. If you're used to playing games with variable frame rate at all, you might not even be able to tell. But if you apply that uh, optical flow and speed warp and just bring that up to 30 frames per second, like, I think you can tell. You can tell it was closer maybe to that 24 frames per second style, but bump it up to 30 and it just feels a little better. And then you can hop into speed change and just change that speed and it uses this same process to stretch your clip. So now we go from this to this. Now this is an interesting clip, especially in this flip he does. It gets a little finicky. I mean, that flip is only happening really over a few frames and we're slowing that down to half speed. Um, so he has like some, some mildly disappearing limbs, but especially coming out of it, I think this motion looks great. And we have another example here. Um, here, this being an original clip in 30 frames per second, which just like, yeah, this is a great video clip. But if you're editing and all of a sudden, hey, I want a slow motion shot, but oh no, we didn't film in 60 frames per second. Apply that same process and you go from full speed to a really solid slow motion shot. Obviously there will be tons of consideration, your source frames per second and shutter speed will end up being a big deal as well. If you are shooting like 24 frames per second at a standard shutter speed and you have that motion going across the frame, uh, sort of like what we saw in this flip. Um, if we come back to this original source footage, you know, he has a lot of natural motion blur during that flip. 
So like, yeah, his leg does kind of disappear. So when you slow that down, there is no real data there to pull from. I would love to stretch this system. I would love to shoot like as fast as I could on my camera and really ramp up that shutter speed so I have almost no natural motion blur. You know, you need like more lights and all that stuff. But I think under a lot of those circumstances, this could be like really, really powerful. This of course is the functionality um, that you used to see all the time in After Effects with like the Twixter plugin, a super popular effect and definitely versatile. Just getting like a bit of natural slow motion to dealing with like action as well. If you're in high speed edit and you just jump to this clip for a little bit while he's running in slow motion, yeah, you can absolutely get away with that. Like I said, this is in the studio version of DaVinci Resolve only. Um, if you're in the free version, uh, go ahead and try some of these other options like frame blend and these like enhanced better. Um, you will see more, not screen tearing, but more like duplicated shapes instead of like warping, you know, like speed warp is, but it might work for you. And if you've been considering a jump to studio, uh, this might be a pretty useful feature for a lot of people. One last thing, this effect does take a long time. On most of these clips, um, just when I was caching, I was getting like two, two and a half frames per second. Back on that podcast I worked on, I had a 45 minute podcast and that was ended up being in 24 frames per second. Um, and according to stuff I tweeted about at the time, that took seven hours. And again, I'm not on the best system. Your performance may vary, but in most cases, I think the reward or the result you get is absolutely worth it. This is a really cool feature. Um, I hadn't seen shown off a lot. It is behind that studio paywall, uh, but it is something that uh, I think more people should know about. And especially if you already have studio, this is some power that you might not have been aware of. Is this appealing to you? Does this possibly nudge you towards that studio license? Let me know in the comments and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.